During these unprecedented times, it is important to acknowledge the mental health of our children. Limit their access to news that may frighten them and mind your reactions because it affects them. Be aware that children have difficulty putting their anxiety into words and mental illness symptoms take longer to appear in children. Try to spend corona-free time in a safe space with your children once a day. Pay attention to your child's mental health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health with support from the Japan International Cooperation Agency. You're almost welcome today. A beautiful day. Something amazing is happening in Brock family. Something amazing is happening in Uganda. Brock is no longer just a microfinance. We're now a bank. I first would like to congratulate Jimmy and his team to making this event and this day happen in, in reality. So let's congratulate Jimmy and his team to take this journey to the flag. I wish to congratulate you upon your achievement of this great milestone and transformation from a tier five microfinance institution to a credit institution, tier two financial institution. Congratulations, Brack Uganda. Jimmy Adiga Onesmas is my name, and I work at Brack Uganda Bank as the managing director and the chief executive officer. Uh, because of the COVID situation that has hit the world, we at Brack we take the SOPs very, very seriously, and these include practicing uh, social distancing, uh, hand sanitizing or washing our hands regularly, and also putting on our masks. Uh, as I bring to you the inspiring story of the Brack journey, telling our story to the public. And to make sure that you hear me loud and audibly, you will permit me to remove the mask so that I can speak to you. Very, very audibly. When Black opened its services in Uganda, many lives were transformed. A school dropout like me has been able to run a poultry farm from the support of her club. As a child mother, I managed to get around to run a business to support education and health for my child. I utilize the reading materials like textbooks at the club. I know and I've taught others how to handle themselves during menstruation. I'm able to manage my finances through financial interest training received. The Brack journey started way back in 1972 in Bangladesh. Bangladesh went through uh, a war, a war situation that led to the establishment of Bangladesh as an independent country. That was the breakaway of, of uh, Bangladesh from Pakistan. And that war involved a lot of genocide. The Bangladeshis, who were, for a Ugandan standard, who were at the level of a grade three teacher, were all exterminated. They were all murdered. There was a genocide orchestrated by the Pakistan government against the Bangladesh uh, breakaway republic. And because of that, there was no leadership, there was no governance. All the capable people had been either murdered or they had fled the country. And our founder, Sir Fazil Hassan Abed, may his soul rest in peace. He passed away last year in, the, in, in April. Uh, he was in the UK doing a very executive job as an executive uh, finance officer with Shell. But because of the love he had for his country, just like many of our young people who love Uganda, like the, His Excellency the President, he sacrificed his job from UK to come back and rebuild this country that had been torn apart by this civil war, the breakaway war, after the independence. And uh, how did he start? You know, he sold off his personal building, the residential building that was in the UK, in which he was living with his family, and used the proceeds to undertake research. What is it that the people of Bangladesh needed post-independence? Post-that conflict, what did the people need? And from that research, he found out people needed 
water and sanitation. People needed medicine, especially for the children and expectant mothers. People needed housing because there was massive destruction, as you all know, what happens in a post-war situation. Now, that research, he presented it to donors. And one of the donors, this was UNICEF, that funded the first grant to Brak Bangladesh. And at that time, it was Bangladesh Rural Advancement Committee. It was aimed at building the rural, the rural uh, uh, parts of Bangladesh that had been ravaged by the war. And uh, the provisions that were there for the community to rebuild themselves, to come back to life, included providing uh, clean water and sanitation, providing medicine for the expectant mothers and the children. And their own, it led to the, the, the conception of a social enterprise. And as you will know, BRAC is a social, running a social enterprise. What does a social enterprise mean? A social enterprise, you are providing social services to communities, but in a business-like nature. So that is when the conception to say, you know, people need housing, people need health, people need water and sanitation, people need food, but they also need finances. Now that is when uh, microfinance became part and parcel of BRAC's social services. But as you'll recall, original BRAC was providing social services purely for the post-war Bangladeshis in order to rebuild their lives. But now it, it, it later turned out that people needed more than just the social services. That's why to date, we provide both social services and financial services. I'll give you an example. When uh, BRAC in Bangladesh started the social enterprise model, they started a similar program like our Operation Wealth Creation, where they were giving cows to households with the intention of providing nutritious food to take care of children that were malnourished because of food insecurity that followed the war, and to provide expectant mothers with the nutrition. That was the purpose of providing milk, cows so that there can be milk in the household. Now, when this cow produces, you extend it to the next home. Now you keep the calf so that the calf grows to become your own. And over a period of time, there are every, almost every household that had access to this gifting of a cow had so much milk, too much for their own consumption. Now they started selling the milk to those who did not have, who had not received the cow. Now as the multiplication of the milk project continued, after so many years, there was too much milk to the extent that people were even pouring milk down. Because almost every homestead had a cow that was producing milk sufficient for their own consumption. Now what did Brack do? Brack said, for us not to discourage people from engaging into such productive ventures, let us invest in milk uh, dairy processing. Now Brack established a dairy processing plant in Bangladesh. To date, I can tell you the number of people who are employed in that value chain is an amazing employment opportunity. Both the farmers, they are now taking to zero grazing of cows to produce sufficient milk, first of all for nutrition, and also for business, for making money, because there is a market opportunity that Brack has created. The last time I visited Bangladesh, there were 128 milk collection centers all over Bangladesh. And uh, for your information, Bangladesh is just about 56% of Uganda's size. That's small, but it has a population of over 180 million people. So you can imagine without such an enterprise, without such an innovative uh, approach to development by Brack that supports the government ventures in Bangladesh, Bangladesh would have been nothing. Bangladesh, I can tell you, the average per capita income for Bangladesh is in the range of $1,600. And you know, for Uganda, we are still growing, but we shall get there. Because Brack is here to partner with the government to drive the same, to replicate the Bangladesh success story in Uganda. That is the reason we came into Uganda. Now, this project of milk production in Bangladesh, now having established a factory, you know what that means in terms of job creation, you know what that means in terms of tax remittances to the government, you know what that means in terms of uh, nutrition level at the households, you know what that means in terms of export earnings for the government of Bangladesh because the milk products are produced for the Bangladeshis and also for export. So that is one success, pro successful project or success story 
that BRAC did way back in Bangladesh to help to rebuild the economy, to rebuild uh, households, to get people out of poverty. Now, how did the BRAC get into Uganda? Globally, BRAC has existed. This is now the 48th year. But in Uganda, we have been here since 2006. How did we get to 2006 starting working in Bangladesh, in, in Uganda? In 2005, I think about September, few committed leaders of this country, including the First Lady, visited Bangladesh to study the success story, to study the development model that BRAC had done in Bangladesh. Because they had read, they had heard about BRAC's success story, BRAC's approach to development, BRAC's approach to fighting household poverty. So this team went to Bangladesh and met with the founder whom uh, who left us last year, may his soul rest in peace. They met him and discussed, tell us the Brack story, how did you do it in Bangladesh? And after hearing the inspiring story of how Brack started, how it grew, how it has touched the lives of the poor, especially women and the youth, then the first lady made a call, said, why can't you replicate this? Why can't you come to our country? Our country is in such a situation that we have gone through several wars that have damaged the economy. But now people have peace, people are settled, but they need to be supported, they need to be inspired, they need to be handheld so that they can contribute to the building of Uganda. Now that is when our founder decided that we needed to go to Uganda. First, to go and study what is the socioeconomic uh, status of the country, what are the economic activities people are engaged in, and so that we can be targeted in terms of how we are going to support Uganda fight household poverty. Now, a group of young Bangladeshis who had never left Bangladesh, who had never moved out of Bangladesh, three of them, they set to an unknown destination, going to the wilderness, going to Africa. They have never been to Africa. They only knew about Africa, reading the literature that there is a continent called Afri Africa, and in that continent there's a, in a, there's a good country called Uganda that has very good weather, that has fertile, they had read about that. So these young men set like, you know, uh, discovery investigators coming to Uganda. The only thing they had was the passport and some few dollars in the pocket. No one to refer to when they reach the airport. They only know if I board the airport from Dhaka, I'll go to Dubai. From Dubai, I'll find a flight to Entebbe. Now when I reach Entebbe, I have to find my way of surveillance to do the mission that the founder of Brad had sent them to do. Now, reaching here, they realized this was a very beautiful country with fertile soils, with nice weather, with nice and receptive people, young, very ambitious, very energetic. That swept them off their feet. They said, this is the country we need to make impact in. The second country after Bangladesh would be Uganda. Now, they realized, uh, they, one of the things they, they, they realized was, um, there is still issue of food insecurity, despite the fertile, nice weather that we have as a country. Now, why was there uh, food, food insecurity or poor nutrition, child, children being minorities? Why was this? Because agro inputs were adulterated. That's why they said, now the first approach for us is to drive food security. So they went to donors to solicit for funds and we established a 55 acre processing plant, agro input processing plant in Nakaseke, near the Nakaseke town, town council, as you approach the town council from Woblet. So that was aimed at uh, improving the agro inputs, like seeds. As we speak now, we have uh, 28 different variety of seeds. These are both cereals and vegetables, like tomatoes, carrots, onions, uh, eggplants, maize, uh, beans, ground nuts, we even do tissue culture, yeah? Banana species that we produce in the lab, uh, 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 a potato species that we, we, we produce from the lab, and we are working in partnership with the government responsible ministries, like NARO, NACRI from Naumlonge. These are the ones that certify the work of BRAC in that area of ensuring food security and nutrition. Everywhere, right from Bangladesh, BRAC is a partner to government. BRAC understands what is government's agenda for the next five years. For us in Uganda, we are always so cautious about the National Development Plan. 
stage one, stage two, stage three. What are the focuses of the government? What do the people want? We come to complement where the government arm will not reach. We come and ride on the infrastructure that the government has put in place. So in the era of agriculture, because Uganda is an agro-economy, the first thing was to ensure that there is good agro inputs for the farmers so that they are one sure of the yield. Before even the yield, they are sure of the germination rate because our seeds have more than 97% germination rate. Every 100 seeds you put in the ground, you are sure 97 will germinate, which used not to be the case before Brack invested into this seed processing plant. When WHO declared COVID-19 as a pandemic, the Ministry of Health reactivated the national task force. So from history, we have been managing the previous pandemics, SARS, Ebola, and our motto was to stay safe in order to treat others. We are looking at training healthcare workers continuously. We've applied this capacity building to the entire country. We should continue getting the essential services that we have been getting before, so that we don't die from the other condition when we are trying to prevent COVID-19. Our mission to ensure the safety of Ugandans is long-standing, and we promise to see it through till COVID-19 is eradicated. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health with support from the Japan International Cooperation Agency. The idea of BRAC behind establishing the seed processing plant is to give farmers courage that once you plant, there will be germination. Once there's germination, there will be yield, and within a short period of time. But now after the yield, what happens? No. The yield needs to be taken to the market in addition to being consumed. Because households do not only need food, they also need non-food items at the household. They need money. That is why the bank comes in to provide the financing to these farmers so that they can buy the quality seeds, they are able to increase their acreage, they are able to increase their production, they are able to increase their earnings and pay back the bank loan and remain sustainable as households and happy. So that is one thing that uh, BRAC focuses on, driving food security and nutrition at the household with the sole purpose of ensuring that uh, the households are healthy to engage in development activity, to engage in productive economic activities. That's number one. Number two, now when you have a very healthy citizenry, what do they need? They need access to health services, modern health services at the doorsteps. Again, here we are partners with the government. Government has invested significantly in Uganda in terms of health infrastructure, health centers. All over the country there are health centers. But as you will know, health service provision is not about the infrastructure. It's about infrastructure, it's about the personnel, it's about the supplies, it's about you know, so many other things that you can, you, you can think of. Now, wh where is our role? Our role is to make sure that we deliver modern health services at the doorsteps of the community so that the time they spend seeking medical uh, services is limited, more time is spent in engaging in economic activities, engaging in productive activities. So how do we do this? You know, the government has a model that we, that we call the VHTs, village health teams. At the BRAC, we call ours community health promoters. Similar caliber, similar approach, but, you know, to complement what the government is doing, to make sure health services, the first line health services are delivered to people at the doorsteps. And then these people make referrals. When it is beyond what they can manage, they make referrals to the government uh, health facilities. But the first line of uh, treatment will have been administered by the health uh, community promoters. And these are trained and certified, uh, refresher trainings are provided by the ministry. They certify the work of these people. So they are not just doing anything illegal or uh, they, they are not uh, witch doctors, they are not herbalists, they are trained and certified community health service providers. Expectant mothers are looked after by these community health promoters. Very young, committed girls. We have about 4,130 of them all over the country. What is the third pillar of drugs development approach? Is education. Now, a family that has been well fed that has access to modern health facilities, will have, will give birth to safe children, you know, the mothers will have uh, safe deliveries, and then these children need access to quality education. 
thankfully the government liberalized the education sector and they allowed and, and they allowed um, and they allowed the private sector to play into the into education service provision and in the private sector you've got to pay school fees yes the government has uh, um, yes the government has uh, uh, UPE but the private sector also comes in to supplement the government has USE the private sector also plays a role to provide services over and above what the government is providing but to access those quality education in the private sector you need access to money so that's where the bank comes in to say we need to provide money to these households so that they can provide their education needs through BRAC's scholarship program now BRAC comes in to support those needy children who are brilliant to access quality education right now we are doing it in secondary education in partnership with about the top 125 schools in this country. And this scholarship is provided in partnership with MasterCard Foundation. And MasterCard has been uh, a big supporter of this journey of BRAC right from inception. In 2006 when we started, MasterCard gave us a lot of money to establish the microfinance branches, to sponsor these students in school, uh, to provide this health service at the doorsteps. All this was funded by MasterCard. And up to today, even during the COVID situation you read in the media, MasterCard still came to support that to continue providing access to education and financing for the uh, COVID-impacted communities in this country. Now, the fourth arm of BRAC's development initiative is the provision of financial services. The philosophy behind this from our experience in Bangladesh is that uh, um, when a community, when a household is exposed to nutritious food food security is exposed to access to quality education uh, the community has access to modern health services at their doorsteps conveniently and they have access to affordable and convenient financial services this household will never be poor because you agree with me um, social services alone cannot fight poverty financial services alone cannot fight poverty but you have to have a combination of this that is our learning that is our experience from Bangladesh. And that's how people can be helped to come out of poverty. So as we provided the credit only lending to these households, they started demanding, Look, can you give us more than just this? We are happy with what you have done. Can you give us an opportunity to save? Now that started coming from the clients who had the attitude, who never thought that they would have excess money in their hands to save. But now they have. Now they started saying, you need to give us an opportunity to save. You are the one who understands us. The other banks don't understand us. So that's when we started tracking the process of getting a banking license from Bank of Uganda. Until in April, uh, in March last year, in March 2019, Bank of Uganda on reviewing the incredible work that we have done as a tire for microfinance, the number of people we have reached, uh, the, the, the size of business, the impact that we have created, the stories, the success stories from the community that have developed with these loans, they saw it fit that we deserve a license. We needed to come under Bank of Uganda supervision so that we can do more. And that is why our tagline, our brand promise, our commitment to Uganda is, now you can do more. It is because we have responded to a cry from the Ugandans to give them more. Now we're saying, now Ugandans, you can do more with the bank. So we got the license in March uh, 2019. and. Uh, I can tell you what there's nothing that has made us proud like making about 200,000 Ugandans have a bank account for the very first time in their life. These are people who never thought they would ever have a bank account. So when we got the license and we announced it to our customers that now you can open a bank account and uh, be able to save the excess money to look into the future, that was the incredible story that uh, customers had for us. It has not been a smooth journey. There are also challenges that we face along the way, um, especially becoming a bank exposed us to a wider risky universe. What do I mean? We used to manage mainly credit risk. The money we lend out to make sure that it comes back, that we lend to people who can pay, we support the people to make sure they pay. That is what we used to do. But now becoming a bank, we are taking deposits we are now being supervised by Bank of Uganda. There are uh, compliance requirements from the international reporting uh, standards which we have to comply with. All those have meant something for us. Yeah? 
we have seen uh, uh, many of our customers unable to meet the know your customer requirements. No, uh, because they either don't have a national ID or they lost the national ID and they have been unable to replace it. Now they cannot open an account. And yet they want to have an account, they want to borrow, they want to save. That has been a big, big challenge for us. But we are working together with NIRA to make sure that these people are supported to get the national IDs so that they can benefit from these affordable financial services delivered at their doorsteps. And uh, the, the reason we went to see His Excellency was to share this journey with him, to say we are partners to your government. We believe in the vision you have for this country in terms of fighting household poverty. And to tell him how are we partnering, partnering with the ministries to fight household poverty. And he was you know, so pleased to hear that we have been there uh, supporting the household poverty in this country. COVID has not also spared us, you know, just like any other institution in this country. COVID has had the worst impact among the poor. And the poor are the people we stand for. The poor are the people we serve. Their small businesses, they have gone down. The working capital, the little working capital that they had, they have had to consume it. And how did we support the households during the, the, the COVID situation? We gave them a four months non-loan repayment period from March up to August, up to end of July. Our customers, they did not pay us. We did not encourage them to take new loans because we were not certain what the future is going to be. Ugandans, if there's anything we have learned from this COVID situation, it is to save. It is to save. Those who saved before COVID had a lesser impact of COVID because they were able to survive on their savings. Because they were not able to multiply, they were not able to do business, they were able to survive on their savings. So from here going forward, BRAC has a very good savings account. We call it Wise Save. So Ugandans, let's get wise, open a Wise Save account at BRAC, let's start saving. Because you never know what the next disaster is going to be. So you need to join the BRAC family. Let us support the government. Let us rebuild our country. All of us are important in the economic development of this country. And the BRAC is the partner to, for you to work with. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening to me. For God and my country.